How y'all doing? This is Devin here with another episode of Community Voices. And today we have a true hooper, like, like a real true hooper with us. We have an NBA champion joining us today. You may have seen him break ankles with the Bucks or hooping overseas, Nigerian national basketball team. Jordan Orr, thank you for joining us for today's episode of Community Voices. How are you feeling today? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. And I want to you know, it's, for me personally, I'm also big on mental health, so I want to make sure that I don't always ask you how are you doing today, but how are you feeling mentally, too, like checking in with you mentally? How, how are you feeling mentally? I'm doing good mentally, man. I'm doing good. I'm at home right now with my family. You know, everybody's doing good, so I'm doing good. Good, good, good. Yeah, it's always, like I said, the mental health piece today's world is kind of crazy, so it's always good to make sure somebody's just, you know what I'm saying, physically grounded and mentally grounded, too. So being home with your family is definitely a way to kind of stay in that, that, that good zone, so that's, that's really dope. So now I want to take, I want to uh, backtrack a little bit to your earlier days. So your father, as I understand, coaches basketball well at a premier level. Am I correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. So growing up, you know, you had somebody who was more experienced. You know, this wasn't just like the backyard coach where, you know, he's teaching him what he knew. He was like more experienced, more professional. Um, what was it like growing up with your father's expertise in basketball and training and kind of helping you develop your game at an early age? Uh, you know, it was great. You know, I say it all the time. I wouldn't be where I'm at today without him and, and his help. Uh, you know, at times it was tough, you know, growing up, you know, as far back as I can remember, you know, he was with me and he was in the gym with me, you know, uh, you know, he started coaching at a, at a junior college out here in Buffalo uh, called ECC, I think the year before I was born. Um, so I really grew up in the gym with him, uh, practicing with his team, uh, stuff like that. You know, it's it's tough at times, you know, playing. My first time ever playing with him was on the Nigerian national team, like as a coach. Yeah. Uh, and it was tough, you know. He's harder on me than everybody else, obviously, because, you know, it's my dad. But, um, you know, like I said, I wouldn't be here without him. And, you know, he got me. He got me to where, I'm, where I am today. What was it like, like, growing up in the sense of, you know, there is that line between somebody being, you know, being a father and then being the trainer. So that line where you can't be too hard on your kids earlier on, but then at the same time, you know, if they're going to take it serious, you kind of have to take it just as serious as they are. What was it like to like kind of see him balance that line or kind of teach hard of that line growing up? Uh, you know, at times it was definitely tough, you know, growing up. Um, you know, I think he saw potential in me at times, you know, when I, when I was younger that, you know, sometimes I didn't see him myself. So mm -hmm. he was always hard on, hard on me. Um, and it wasn't until I got older I started to realize, like, you know, on the court, you know, he's my coach. You know, on the, on when we're off the court, you know, it's just back to being dad. And sometimes I got those lines blurred, you know, playing. You know, he's coming at me, you know, a certain type of way. And, you know, at, in that moment, I'm like, damn, like, this is my dad. But, you know, he's <laughs> he's coming at me like a coach. So, you know, as I got older, I understood it more. Um, you know, by the time I, I was in high school, I think, you know, I had fully kind of got the got the vibe, you know, I understood, like, the difference between being on the court <laughs> and him coaching me and, you know, being off the court and just being, you know, my dad, you know, all the times he's my dad, but, you know, we got to get serious when we're on the court. So. For sure. For sure. And I have to, you know, I can't leave that subject without asking one-on-one -on -one today. Who's, who's getting the dub one-on-one -on -one today? You or your dad? Who's getting it? I'm killing him. <laughs> I'm killing him. <laughs> I'm killing him. <laughs> That's sure. funny. Dope, dope. So I mentioned it a couple, a little bit ago, the Nigerian basketball team, how did, um, like, so when, I'm going to start off here because there's a lot to unpack there. So, like, the Nigerian basketball team, one of the biggest upsets, you can say, recently in, in, in international basketball was when the Nigerian basketball team beat Team USA last year. Yeah. Take me back to, like, what was it like to, to experience that in the sense of just, you know, those being people that you also play with, but, you know, you're – it's like that whole the whole dynamic of how that feels. So it has to feel a little bit different for you coming from kind of like both worlds and both sides. You know, it was super cool, you know, that happening. Growing up, you know, watching Team USA to then playing them and being able to beat them in a, in a you know, world, you know, type of game. You know, it was crazy. Um, it just shows how far Nigeria has come and, you know, the steps were in, on the right track moving forward. You know, I think, you know, the years coming up, you know, there's a lot of, you know, great things to look forward to for Nigeria um, in terms of basketball. Uh, we're just growing and getting better uh, every year. When did you kind of know that that team was, was, was like special? You know what I mean? I know, I know you see the team grow, you see it develop, you know the talent you have on the team, you know, of course yourself as well. But when did you kind of like, was it before the game or after the game? When did you know that this team was something really special? 
I think it's as far as far back as, as training camp, uh, just playing with those guys. Um, you know, every year we have more and more pros, NBA guys playing. Um, and not just, you know, NBA guys, but guys who are getting minutes and playing a lot in the NBA. So, um, you know, the more that happens, the more guys we're able to get. Um, these are the best players in the world, and they're playing on Nigeria too. So I think that's when I realized it was special. For sure, most definitely. Yeah, it's just it's just dope to see. I don't. I guess the like the landscape of this basketball internationally change and grow, and and like the attention just spread to where it should be. Because like you said, that talent is just developing all over the world. So it's really cool to see the Nigerian basketball team continue to to grow and develop and have an even stronger presence. So you're 100 percent right. Now, as we all know, you're Nigerian American, and you continue to do a lot of work in the Nigerian community as well. So could you kind of dive into more, of, um, you know, just about the camps that you put on and the goal and you know, what, what what kind of pushes that and what kind of is your inspiration and passion behind that? <laughs> so growing up, you know, I went to Nigeria a bunch with my dad. Obviously, he's Nigerian. I'm Nigerian. You know, <laughs> I went up, grew up going to Nigeria with him. Um, this is long before he started coaching internationally. But, you know, he was always running camps over there. So, you know, I grew up firsthand when I seen him do his camps. Uh, and he has a great passion for that, which kind of, you know, tra translated into me. So that was, you know, cool to, to uh, now, um, now I'm running camps and, and he's helping me out. So, you know, that's something that's good. Uh, but I mean, it's just, it's just crazy, you know, how, how far things can come. It's just me using my platform. Um, you know, now I have the opportunity to, to run camps in my name. Now, obviously, with his help, um, and we're just going to, you know, keep doing it. The goal is to just give back. You know, growing up, I went to a ton of camps. Uh, I, I went to my dad's camps. You know, I participated in some of those camps. Now it's my turn to, you know, be able to do the same and return the favor to, you know, some of these kids. And, you know, hopefully just keep growing this camp and keep it, keep it going moving forward. For sure. I love it. Yeah, I'm all about giving back and giving to the community. That's like my whole – I feel like that's like my God's calling is like kind of always giving back to the community or just kind of, because somebody's always watching, you know, you never know who's watching you, who will see you and that will make the difference in their life or push them forward or kind of give them that spark. So that, that's just really dope to that work that you do that you continue to do. That's really inspirational too, for me personally. So that's really dope. Um, now I want to kind of understand too, you know, these kids that you see at these camps and the work that you do, you know, some of them see you, of course, they see you over in America, you know, playing professional basketball in the NBA, but then some of them may know you from, you know, playing there locally and things like that. What is it like, what is the attention like when you when you kind of go back and forth between, you know, both countries? Like, what is, what is it like kind of walking that line? Uh, I think it's, it's different, you know. I think, um, you know, when I'm in the States, you know, in Buffalo, I think it's more of a you know, there are, it's more of like, a, I'd say like kind of fan reaction I get in terms of like being out here, you know, obviously I ran a camp in Buffalo uh, a week ago and, you know, those kids, you know, are super happy. It's more like, you know, they're more like, like fans, you know, they're having, you know, the time of their life, just being able to come to camp, you know, little kids. And, and then, you know, going to Nigeria, um, I'm not saying the people over here don't, you know, appreciate the camps as they do, but you just really see how much, you know, some of the kids overseas like really need the camp, like, it's really life changing for them. Um, you know, there's not every day, you know, they have access to being around an NBA player, being able to participate in a camp ran by an NBA player. Um, and, you know, that's, that's just something that's, that's cool. You know, it's life changing. It's inspirational to some of them. Um, you know, some of these kids, you know, we've had a few kids from the camps overseas actually come over to the States on, you know, I 20 stuff like that, you know, getting into high schools, you know, some scholarships. Um, and that's really the goal, man, you know, letting, getting some of these kids, you know, over getting, giving them an opportunity to, you know, chase their dreams. Um, because, you know, it's, it's possible, it's possible. And you're seeing it every year, people coming over to America from not only Nigeria, but all over Africa and really, you know, doing a, doing a great job. And, um, you know, hopefully that's, that's the plan, you know, keep, you know, going out there, letting these kids have fun. You know, the one, the people that, the people that want to take it serious can take it serious. We'll try as, as best as we can to help them get over here and, you know, chase their dreams. And for the people that just want to have a good time at a camp, you know, they come have a good time at a camp. So, um, you know, it's great. 100%. Now, like I said, that work that you, that you do, that you and your father do is, is, is incredible and super fire. Continue doing it, of course. Because like you said, that, that 
like there is that balance of like you know there's those kids who go and they're trying to develop they're trying to be in the NBA things like that but then there's also those kids that you know they may not be going to the NBA but like that's saving their lives like that one thing is like keeping them from you know a certain situation or just like bringing them some kind of positivity that they may not be able to find outside of that gym so that's that's that work that you do is in super pivotal so keep doing it and I love to see it and that's awesome for sure thank you so before we get ready to wrap things up, uh, lastly, but most importantly, JE Sports and Finish Line will be donating 10K to the Joy Noir Foundation and then continues helping and pushing, supporting the incredible work that it's done and will continue doing going forward in the future. Um, but for those who aren't as familiar, I would love if you wouldn't mind kind of tapping in and letting people know what the foundation is about. I know we kind of talked about how it came together, but just letting them know a little bit more of, um, you know, what the foundation is and what it's about. Yeah, so, you know, Jordan Warrior Foundation, I think the the main goal is just, as we talked about, you know, inspiring youth and giving uh, these kids chances, you know. Uh, you know, some of these kids are underprivileged. They don't have everything, you know, the access to everything that I had growing up or, you know, some a lot of the people I know uh, grew up. And it's just giving them the opportunities, chances, uh, resources to, you know, chase their dreams. If they have a love for the game, you know, we're going to, like I said, try to help them, you know, continue that. Um, you know, we're working with a bunch of other, you know, uh, foundations, charities, you know, I'm, my camp, we have, you know, Samaritan's Feats coming, you know, giving kids shoes, you know, some kids don't even have shoes to, to you know, play in. So, you know, we get everybody a fresh pair of shoes uh, with Samaritan's Feet. I say thank you to them for that. Um, obviously, Adidas is helping us out a lot. Um, and it's just, you know, a bunch of stuff, whatever. The main goal is just to, you know, brighten these, these kids' futures, um, you know, keep them out of, I'd say, you know, steer them in the right path. You know, there's a lot of times, you know, too much free time sometimes can be a bad thing. So, you know, just steering them in the right path, showing them it's possible and just uh, inspiring them really. So that's really the goal, my goal, uh, my dad's goal. And hopefully, like I said, we're just going to keep growing it and uh, keep reaching as many, you know, kids as possible. For sure. I love it. Love it. I love that positivity. And that's needed today in today's world. So that's fire. I, and I want to, I know I said before we wrap things up a couple minutes ago, but I do want to ask one last question. We're talking about the foundation, what, is, what would you say is one of your most memorable moments, um, you know, with, with this foundation or in these camps? What's been one of your most memorable moments? I think, I think there's two things that, you know, stuck out to me. I'd say first, um, I think the first thing that stuck out to me the most is probably the camps in Nigeria where, just seeing the kids, I, I never saw joy like that in a long time, mm -hmm. you know, just being there and just being able to like see it and witness how happy and how life-changing it is. You know, I knew it was going to be a good camp and everything, but you know, when you, when you see it, you see the joy on somebody's face is something that really like, it opens up your heart a little bit. It's, it's sure. uh, crazy. And I think the second thing is when we had a few kids be able to come over to the States and, you know, on I-20 scholarships and, just so in knowing that that how life changing that can be not only for basketball but just in general the rest of their lives like that's something that you know some kids are dreaming for and I'm I'm able to you know help them do that so um, I think those were the two the two biggest things so far. That's dope. Yeah, nothing nothing really beats putting a smile like on a kid's face like because you just like you said like I said earlier you just don't know how much that like bit of joy is it doing for them or may do for like the rest of their like life or day or whatever it is so yeah that's that's super special that's super dope exactly. well look man thank you very much for cutting our time out of your busy day to uh join us for community voices thank you for all the hard work you do um i just wanted to say continue being great continue staying healthy continue taking care of yourself and i look forward to just continue seeing you know you grow in your career man I'm looking forward to it you got a fan thank you thanks so much i appreciate everything i appreciate everything of course man take care for sure